financial instructor Michael Mazaran from the Retirement Education Foundation is here. We are talking about how to get our kids off, uh, not just kids, but really all of us can learn these that lesson. So we're talking about credit cards versus debit cards and whether it's your kids, grown-ups, um, what are the pros and cons to both? So Michael, welcome. Thanks Thank for being you, here. Thank you, of course. So, you know, in, we'll start with the kids. For kids, it's really important to build good habits when it comes to money and when it comes to spending. And, you know, for the kids to first start off, debit cards are a great tool because debit cards are basically cash. So instead of carrying the cash around, you've got the debit card. And it sort of teaches them that don't swipe that card unless the cash is in the account, which yeah. is a really good sort of mental connection of with a credit card, it's tempting to know I can pay, I can buy it now, and I'll pay for it later. It's a very tempting thing. But with right. a debit card, you're teaching them don't swipe the card unless the cash is in the account. With with, with debit cards, also, you know, you can, we can put restrictions on the account to make sure that we're getting alerts. So if we see the kids swiping the card with debit cards, we know what's coming through we can make sure that they're spending on what they should be spending on there's some protections that come because i've done it with all three of my kids when you get the debit card there are some protections that are built into if they overspend um and yeah you can become uh pretty aware of what they're spending on but there's also what's the risk with these debit cards because can if somebody gets a hold of that number uh, can, are they protected that way, like you are with a credit card? So there are some fraud protections with debit cards, but a debit card is a direct link to your bank account, to your checking savings bank account. Whereas credit cards, they do provide a sort of a layer of protection between someone maybe getting your card and, and your bank account, your cash. So that's where credit cards do have the edges. There, there are more fraud protections and, and consumer protections on credit cards that way. And that's a part of what I wanted to ask. Is there a pecking order in terms of what you would recommend uh, for the debit card versus like a secured credit card? And that's really, so I would start for the kids with a debit card mm -hmm. to help teach them that connection of don't swipe the card unless you have the cash. Yeah. And then if, yeah, every kid's different. If mm -hmm. they're doing really good, if they're really, if they're really responsible, to graduate them up to a credit card. If there's, if if you think they're on the right track, but you're still not quite sure and you want to keep the training wheels on, if you will, you can move up to a secured credit card where it is a credit card, but there's a very low limit that's, that's secured by an account balance. Mm -hmm. But so kids can't get a credit card until they're, until they're 18. 18, but even then, uh, if you don't have a good credit history or if you don't have a job and that, that sort of thing can be tough. So, they, so you're adding them to your credit card account in most so cases, right? It can go both ways. You can add the kids to your own account as an authorized user or there are a lot of cards out there for young kids, you know, students and, and those credit card companies typically provide lower limits because they recognize they're giving someone their first credit card and you know, as long as they're using it responsibly, their credit limit will grow with that with, hmm. with good credit use. What kind of how financially responsible do you need to be uh, to determine if you're a, a good candidate to put your child on your account? Can you hurt your child's credit, basically? It can happen. So if you find yourself really constantly falling behind the credit card payments, yeah. that might be a sign to say, you know what, let's have, let's set up the, our child on a separate credit account so that we're not commingling mm -hmm. these accounts because you don't want to cause issues for the kids. Yeah, it is. Um, and I have, so uh, in my circle of friends, some of them do put their kids on their credit cards ac accounts because if a child is an authorized user on your credit card account, they're building their credit, right? They are. It does help the kids. Now, it does help them more to have their own credit, a card, their own credit card account in their own name, but mm -hmm. being an authorized user and having good credit habits still does help them. Okay. And the rule is you're always looking for something without an annual fee, right? Oh. Which is hard to find. <laughs> good luck. Yeah. They are hard to find, but they definitely are, are out there. Now, for some people who are really power spenders, some of those annual fees might be worth it, where you might pay 100 bucks in an annual fee, but if you're getting three, four, five hundred dollars in benefits, it could be worth it. But you've got to run that math because hmm. some people th think, well, of course I'll use that benefit, and they don't end up using it. Right. Hmm. Oh, boy. All right. Good stuff. Learning uh, at young ages how to handle uh, credit cards, debit cards, money. Thank you, it's Michael. It's important, of course. We'll see you next hour. Where we're going to talk about if you're getting money back on your taxes. Yes. It's uh, a big topic. Mm, Come tax time. Are you allowed to just run out and spend it right away? <laughs>
Monday was the final day to file taxes, and the number of Americans getting a refund is down this year, but the average refund is up. It's about 3000 bucks. And we're back with financial instructor Michael Mazarin from the Retirement Education Foundation. What do you do with that refund if you got, what, we're saying $3,000? 3, $3, so, Michael. On average. Uh, first of all, that's a nice chunk of change, isn't it, to be getting back? It is. You know, it's so funny. Taxes are so emotionally charged. Mm -hmm. When people owe taxes, they're furious. Yeah. When they get a refund, it's like found money. It's like free money. And it's so funny because if you're getting a tax refund, it was your money the whole time. You lent the government a interest-free loan for the whole year. You're just getting your money back that they owe you. But people, it, people treat it as a windfall, as found money. Yeah. And so you the know, goal should be to be as close to zero as possible. Ideally, right? yeah. yeah. And so you know, if, if we got a big refund last year, that's great. But what we could consider doing is maybe reducing our withholdings from our employer and paying less from our paycheck to try to get closer to zero. Because if we can get that money in our paycheck and throw it in the 401k, throw it in an IRA, pay off high, high interest debt, or even just put it in a bank account earning you know, four and a half, five percent in a high yield savings account, that's all better than getting an interest free loan to the government back come tax time. How do you figure that out? How do you make it so that you break even at tax time? Is is there a calculation you do? So there are a lot of online calculators that you can estimate your tax bill. Go online, add in your, your data. Are you single or married? Approximately how much will your household earn that year? They'll spit out an approximate tax calculation or work with a CPA as well also works. And make sure you're withholding enough per paycheck to hit that tax bill. Now the people who don't withhold enough throughout the year and they owe taxes, that's not fun because that's typically not on someone's radar. Mm. They were not, they were filing taxes, expecting maybe to get a small, to owe, owe something small, maybe a small refund. If you owe a big bill, that's number one, not fun for your budgeting. And number two, there could be penalties if, if you're owing enough. Mm. This may not sound fun to a lot of people that all of a sudden have uh, a windfall, for lack of a better way to say it, if you're getting $3,000. But we have seen, we've done stories, credit card debt in this country is at its peak. It's never been as high as it is right. today. Right. Um, is it obviously a good idea to pay that down first? So that's the, if there's credit card debt, pay that off first. That's number one. But this is where the budgeting can be fun. If we did a good job in 2023 budgeting, we didn't overspend, we have all the credit cards paid off, and we get a windfall, and we're saving to the 401k, we're saving for retirement, we're doing everything right, and, and this windfall comes, go for it. Treat yourself. Take a vacation. Do what you want to do as long as everything else is, is taken care of. And the priority there is the priority, the credit card debt, paying that off? Yeah, number one, it's always, the high interest debt's always the first thing that's got to go. That's okay. the, first, the first thing that's got to go. Number two is we need to make sure we have the emergency fund. And then number three, we also need to make sure we're saving for retirement. That is, that often gets overlooked. If we're, if we're saving for retirement, we've got that tackled away, great, we can start to spend. What do those two things look like though? The emergency fund, what's the, what's the ratio yeah. or So ideally three to six months of expenses, of, okay. of our fixed expenses in case we lose a, lose a job and we can kind of coast on that for a couple months. And then in terms of saving for retirement, let's make sure we're hitting that at least 15% per year number. It's great okay. stuff. Um, and then you can uh, you do all that. And the, the pain of the credit card bills, I know you talk about there's the snowball, or what's the, the other The snowball approach? versus the avalanche. Yeah. And so it, really, either way, so one of the strategies, you're paying off the smallest balance first. The other strategy, you're paying off the highest interest rate first. Okay. Now, mathematically, paying off the highest interest rate first is always the better answer mathematically. But if it helps people to stick with it and they yeah. see I'm knocking out accounts, if it helps you to stick with that, fine, go for that too. Right. A little bit of progress goes a long way with your mental yeah. the uh, psychology. The, psychology. Sure. Like, the best strategy yeah. is one you can stick with. Yeah. You know, if, if, if on paper, exactly. <laughs> if on paper, this might be the best thing, but you don't stick with it, it doesn't matter. Michael, what's the website people can find you to get more information? Uh, retirement planning edu.org. Love it. Good resource. Thank you, Michael.